What's going on guys, it is I, Some Joe Schmo, and I'm here once again to talk about movies. If you guys have not already taken a look at our last week's playlist of our top three best movies of October, go ahead and do so now because we are going to be starting our Adventure Down top three worst movies that I saw in October. Uh, just on a side note guys, and you know, honestly speaking, I just wanna say, you know, even though these are, you know, really bad movies, I still had a good time just, you know, watching them and even just being able to write out some stuff and share these movies with you guys. So uh, ultimately these might be a little longer than our best ones because I had a lot to say about some of these movies. So uh, we're gonna be kicking things off here relatively shortly. Before we do that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and remind you to go ahead and just put that mouse pointer right in that slingshot, fire it on over and smack that like button. Also too, while you're here, just go ahead and uh, ride on top of that subscribe button. And give it a little tap while you're at it. Hunter's Moon. Hunter's Moon was directed by, who gives it? <laughs> Let's just talk about this movie. Immediately the movie's poster just sinks its fangs into you, you know, showing you stars such as Thomas Jane, Deep Blue Sea, The Punisher, Sean Patrick Flannery of Boondock Saints, one of my all-time favorite movies. Even <sighs> Jay Moore, to a certain extent. I mean, maybe, maybe it was indicative of a bad movie with Jay Moore right at the get-go, but a quick story break. Never take a photo with Jay Moore. He's an asshole. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start a review of Hunter's Moon. Sean Patrick Flannery is immediately established as a little bit of a creep, drugging this woman and unfortunately leading to her untimely demise, burying her then in the back of his vineyard. It's at this moment then that Sean Patrick Flannery is killed. And I know what you might be thinking, because you're you're probably just like me. Uh, maybe it's just a clever ruse of, of just, you know, uh, bringing out Sean Patrick Flannery, you know, main guy, build right there on the poster. Maybe they're just luring you out just to maybe establish it. Maybe Sean Patrick Flannery is the werewolf that, that's supposed to be presented in this Hunter's Moon movie. Maybe Sean Patrick Flannery is, you know, a, a werewolf hunter and, and, and makes it out on top. No, no, oh no, he's dead. One of the main characters on this movie poster dies within two minutes of the movie. Like, it's like Tinder versus reality. Like, you show me something right there, and then my expectations of what it's like is completely different than what was I, what was presented to me. I, I, I'm so flustered at the situation that I feel, I feel like it was a ruse. I beg your pardon? Your ruse, your cunning attempt to trick me. With that being said, we're quickly introduced to our main family, led by the patriarch, Thomas, played by Jay Moore, and wife Bernice, played by Amanda Weed. Joined with him are their three lovely daughters, Juliet, Lisa, and the mute known as Wendy. As a moviegoer, you might be, you know, maybe you're just a, you're your average stir the mill moviegoer. You just like to throw in a movie, you know, maybe just shut off your brain. Uh, maybe you just enjoy, you know, just separating yourself from reality and you just really enjoy these little things. Or if you're a hardcore like myself, you throw on that detective cap and you start just throwing out nonsense. You start just throwing out theories. Maybe you're trying to figure out what the end of the movie's gonna be. Maybe it's a who done it, but it was also within this first five minutes of me and this family that, you know, my, my moviegoer friend just decided to guess that it was you know, Jay Moore and his wife that were the werewolves. And was it really that easy? <laughs> I mean, you got fucking Jay Moore wearing a wolf baseball cap. <laughs> now our were fam here, you know, moves into the vineyard that once belonged to Boondock Saints. And yeah, you pretty much already guessed it. Yeah, they, they probably were the ones that killed Boondock Saint. Hey, maybe there's still some mystery. Maybe there's just like, maybe we'll find out like, hey, why? Why did they do it? I mean, surely it's not just like they're a superhero, you know, werewolf group that's just trying to destroy and take out evildoers and, you know, do the bidding of maybe what cops can't do. And that's just, you know, destroy and kill, you know, creepy perverts. I'm sure there's no reason why that would be the case, right? On our way into town, our uh, group of Ware family decides to stop at a little convenience store and pick up a few supplies. This is where we meet one of our, I guess you would call him antagonist of a werewolf film, Billy Boy here, where the flirtation is just palpable. They're just oozing with thirst. But sometimes people aren't what they seem to be on the surface. Message! We're now introduced to our trio of badass boys. Look at this nerd. What? Th who hired it? Do we got... Do we not have anyone else here? Is there no one else we can replace? No, we're left with this John Heater, Napoleon Dynamite looking mother- All right, let's let's uh, let's go, let's wrap it. For all intents and purposes, let's just go ahead and hit the gas on this dookie highway of this movie. Bad boys begin to scout the house. Parents leave were girls alone at said house. Bad boys then use this opportunity to go ahead and try to break in and steal some shit. Were girls are were aware of the intruders that are trying to get into their house. <laughs> what party? 
for our honored guests. The ones outside of our house right now. Come on, come on! Where girls invite said bad boys into the house to begin to party. Youngest where girl gets upset and storms outside. Big bad ass boy decides to follow her and maybe commit some, you know, sexual assault. It's about this time where we recognize we're about 40 minutes into this movie and nothing has happened. Not, not, there's absolutely nothing that has happened in this movie other than just uh, an, an attempt a sexual assault and... Kai is so beautiful. Uh, underage drinking, I guess? Uh, uh, this movie sucks. I also want to call attention to the fact that once again, it's 40 minutes in this movie and we still have yet to see Thomas Jane. Oh, oh, Terry, Thomas Jane has come to the rescue. Maybe, maybe Thomas Jane. Okay, okay, Thomas, you're here. Yeah, 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 you've established yourself as, you know, a, a pretty decent actor. Barricade the windows and barricade all the doors, okay? And do it quickly. Oh, sh uh, he's shit, isn't he? Okay. Thomas Jane comes to discover that during this altercation between Big Bad Ass Boy and Young Wear Girl, a mysterious creature decided to spread some jam on Big Bad Ass Boy's face, thus leaving him dead in the middle of the vineyard, and now this mysterious creature is nowhere to be found. Daryl, poor son of a bitch. And this is the thing, Thomas Jane just doesn't feel like he gives a shit about this movie. <laughs> And there's so many lines and how he delivers them that just feel so lackluster and just feel like there's no emotion and that he's just literally reading this script out loud on set just for a paycheck. What the fuck? Well, if the thing comes back, I'll shoot it. Okay? What'd you do to my radio? I don't blame him, obviously. It's like, I mean, if I read this script and I thought it was, you know, I, I'd probably just still do it in order to get a paycheck too. But if you don't care, why do I care watching it? I spent $5 on this movie. Okay, so now we're outside, you know, and uh, uh, it seems like he's got a relationship with these guys. He knows them, doesn't he? Wait, you're related to- All of them, ma'am. These boys been a pain in my ass ever since the day each one of them was born. Okay, 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 okay. They're all brothers. Thomas Jane is the dad of the... Can we just rewind for a second? How I'd react to my son's gruesome death for a thousand. Daryl, poor son of a bitch. And it's at this point I realized the movie is about an hour in its runtime of an hour and 23 minutes and <laughs> we've seen flashes and glimpses of a were creature. I... Uh, uh, it, it's... You know, I don't mind... Let me go ahead and say I don't mind bad movies. I don't mind watching really dumb things happen. But it's types of movies like these where nothing is happening is the worst thing you could watch. It's just, you build up my my expectations of a werewolf movie. You, 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 you draw me in with a movie poster. You know, the, the fact that it was called Hunter's Mood already establishes that there should be werewolves in this movie. And in fact, I've seen nothing that would indicate any sort of werewolf is a lot. Uh, uh, I, I only know there's a werewolf because it's called Hunter's Moon. This is absurd. And now here we are, guys. After 60 plus long, excruciating minutes of just pain getting through this movie, we're finally presented the creature at hand. And it is god awful. This seriously looks like the, 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 the costume department went to a party city, found the first werewolf mask they could find, then went down to their local Kmart, bought a bunch of baby oil, slathered that bad boy up, put the costume on, and that was the outcome we got out of it. The reveal of this monster is so anticlimactic, and it, it's like, like, we didn't even get a cool transformation scene, uh, they couldn't even give us uh, even a cool face shot. There was nothing redeeming about this creature, and frankly, it took a thing of just like doo doo butter, slathered a piece of toast with it, tried to force feed it to me, and you know, at the end of the day, it's shit toast, and I don't want any part of it. This movie's shit, dude. <laughs> it's now revealed that our were family are indeed a group of vigilante werewolves hunting down and, you know, tracking down these scumbags across the world. And unfortunately for our guy Billy Boy here, he is one of them. We come to find out that Billy Boy has been supplying Sean Patrick Flannery at the beginning of this movie a supply of women in which he, you know, abducts and kills. So there's no wonder why Billy Boy is next on their list. With all evildoers vanquished, our Ware family now decides on their next Ware adventures. Oh yeah, and, and Mute Girl finally says something. Your mom's right, you're right. Can we go, can we go? <laughs> yeah, I thought we were never gonna leave. The only line she says at the end of the movie 
Why she's a mute? Who knows? Who gives a sh This movie's over. Thank you guys so much once again for stopping on by and sharing in these movie adventures of mine. This is the first of three in our top worst movies that I watched in October. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, just a quick little heads up. We are going to be looking to do a little bit more thematic movie watching here in the next couple of weeks as we do have some major holidays coming up. So uh, it's just a little bit of a teaser for you guys. We'll be having a more official announcement about what those are going to be in uh, those next couple of weeks. So once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning on in. This is Some Joe Schmo out.